In this video, we are going to introduce the idea of linear regression. The basic idea of linear regression is to try to explain some real valued label Y based on a feature X. And for today, we are going to assume simply that uh, X is a real valued feature. To fix ideas, uh, Y could be the number of Nobel Prizes per capita of a country, and X could be the quantity of chocolate per capita that the country consumes. If we draw a graph, then each datum for each given country will be a dot in this graph with the X axis and the Y axis. Once we've represented all the data for all countries, then we get a cloud of points. Well, linear regression aims at determining some linear approximation of this cloud of points. That is, we're trying to put some line which there will be most of the data on. Typically, results about scientific studies will be stated in terms of this linear approximation, which, if you remember your basic algebra classes, is determined by an equation of the form y equals to beta x plus alpha. Now, in this example here, it might be not too hard to guess what could be a best linear approximation, but we want to make the notion of best linear approximation more formal and as well, we would like to be able to scale it up for more general contexts. And in the early 1800s, two great mathematicians, uh, Gauss and uh, Legendre, independently had the brilliant idea to measure the quality of a linear approximation by adding up the squares of the deviations of data points from the linear regressions in terms of up-down deviations. In other words, the error of the linear approximation is the quantity I'll call squares here, which is going to be the sum of the squares of the distance between the prediction of the linear approximation, which is beta xi plus alpha, and yi, the real label of point i. And so we're going to take the square of all these deviations and sum them all up. And the reason why this is a brilliant idea is that the linear regression then becomes not too hard to compute. Indeed, we want to minimize a quadratic convex form squares with respect to two variables, beta and alpha. To do so, we simply need to take the derivatives of squares with respect to beta and alpha and sort of brute force our way out of these. Now, in this video, I'm going to use a very simple trick to simplify the computations. Let's move our coordinate system into the cloud of points so that in this new coordinate system, points will have coordinates with small letters x and y, such that the average value of the xi's is going to be zero. In other words, the sum of all xi is going to be equal to zero. Similarly, the average value of the yi's is going to be zero as well. It's intuitively clear, at least, that the best linear approximation will have to go through the origin of this new coordinate system. Plus, it will have the same slope as the best linear approximation described in the old coordinate system. Therefore, the sum of squares is now sum of the beta xi minus yi squared, which is much simpler to write. And when we take the derivative with respect to beta, we obtain two times the sum of the xi times beta xi minus yi, which is equal to 2 times beta times the sum of the xi squared minus 2 times the sum of the xi yi. Since this needs to be 0 when we minimize the sum of squares, we obtain the equation on beta. Beta equals to uh, sum of the xi yi divided by the sum of the xi squared. And given that the xi and the yi have zero average, this is exactly the covariance of the vector x with respect to the vector y divided by the variance of the vector x. And, and since the small letter coordinates are just translations uh, of the capital letter coordinates, so we just add a constant and the, the addition of a constant does not affect any variance or covariance measure. This is going to be as well equal to the covariance of the capital X and with respect to the capital Y vectors divided by the variance of the vector X. 
Finally, we can simply retrieve the value of alpha using a geometric argument. We know that small x equals to zero and small y equals to zero defines a point that is on the best linear approximation. Now, in the old coordinate system, the coordinates of these points are, well, the average value of the x size, of the capital X size, which is bar x, and the average of the capital Y size, which is bar y. The fact that this point, which is the average of the cloud of points, lies on the reg linear regression means that beta bar x plus alpha, that's the prediction of the linear approximation, is going to be exactly equal to bar y, the average value of the y i's, of the capital Y i's. And then we obtain the equation alpha equals to bar y minus beta x. And thus, eventually, we've determined both our beta and our alpha, and we obtain the linear regression y equals to the covariance between the x and the y's divided by the variance of the, the x times x minus the average of x plus the average of y. In other words, to first approximation y is about the average of y, knowing how x deviates from bar x, we can add a linear correction that's determined by how y varies with x. Hope this is at least intuitively clear. Finally, there's something I cannot stress enough, namely, just because y varies with x does not mean that y causes x in any way. Just because there's a correlation does not mean that there's a causation. Back to our chocolate example, experimental data do show that Nobel Prizes vary with chocolate consumption, but this does not mean that chocolate consumption causes Nobel Prizes. In fact, I highly invite you to come up with a much more sensible explanation for this correlation.